week, President Trump did away with DACA, the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals program, put into place five years ago by President Obama, which allowed undocumented immigrants brought here as children to illegally apply for work permits, etc. Now, the program will wind down over the next six months, allowing permits to be renewed for those whose status expires during that time and giving Congress the opportunity to act on a permanent plan before that deadline. Now, to talk about this and other topics of the week, I'm joined at the line table by Lana Atkinson. She's a professor in the UNM Political Science Department. Serge Martinez is back. He's a professor at the UNM School of Law. Laura sanchez Reve, she's an attorney at Cuddy and McCarthy LLP. And Julianne Grimm, editor of the Santa Fe Reporter. Laura, starting with you, in announcing the end of DACA, the Department of Homeland Security called the program's constitutionality into question. It's an interesting one, said it conflicts with existing immigration laws. Are, what's, what are you hearing here with this announcement by uh, the Attorney General? Are they looking for this clarity here? We have to mix in some of the confusing tweets from the President here in a quick second. But uh, what, what's, what's, what are they going for here in your, in your view? What's the bottom line? Well, I mean, I think the argument from the Trump administration and uh, mm -hmm. Attorney General Sessions is that it's un unconstitutional. I mean, essentially they're saying that um, this act by executive order was inappropriate because the, the essentially an immigration law is something that Congress is supposed to right. implement. And in doing this through executive order, um, they, they basically skirted around, or Obama skirted around um, Congress, and therefore it's gonna be challenged and it wouldn't work anyway, so they're right. gonna rule it back. The problem is that the, the overall impact, and there's been, you know, this is sort of a gray area in some ways because there's a lot of executive orders that Trump has already um, moved forward with, where I think folks have had a similar reaction um, in opposing uh, his, his executive orders. But I think one of the issues here is that, you know, there's, there's just such a wide, um, a broad sweeping change for a lot of the people who have enrolled in this particular program um, that now that calls into question, you know, what their status will be, what their timeline looks like. There's just a lot of uncertainty that's creating, I think, a lot of anxiety and tension mm -hmm. for um, people all over the country and especially here in New Mexico. That's a good point. Now, Lana, we have a woke youth, as they say. A lot of walkouts this week, Santa Fe, Albuquerque, all over mm -hmm. the country, certainly. Um, you know, here, here are kids that, you know, couldn't make these decisions for, for themselves. They're doing what they can. The statistics show they are not criminals. They're looking for education. Do you know what I mean? It's almost like a, the perfect immigration track, an immigrant track, if mm -hmm. you want to look at it that way. What, what, how, the pushback as you're seeing it, what's the basis of it and where do we go from here on this? Well, you know, obviously the human mm -hmm. issues are, are so complicated and, and horrifying to right. all of us. Right. Um, I think taking it to a political level, you know, we have this constant, you know, where we have Democrats come in and then a Republican or, you know, we have changing presidents mm -hmm. and using executive orders to make decisions means that you have different decisions with every administration and that's a problem. And, um, you know, it's going to be very interesting to see if Congress, which cannot get their act together on anything, can actually be pushed to do something. That's right. Um, I hope they do. Six months. Yeah. I mean, Serge, six months to get something like this complicated together. A congressional fix. At the end of the road, is this just where all roads should lead anyway, a congressional fix here? Do you know what I mean? I, is this I, just an awkward way to get there? I absolutely do. And I think yeah. if that's where we get, then this will have been a good thing. This, you know, DACA students who I've spoken to say, you know, at the end of the day, we would prefer certainty than to live in limbo for who knows how long. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think it will be problematic if the fix is focused entirely on the DACA program. That's ah. a very small percentage of our immigrant community. And, and by creating this narrative of the good immigrant, the immigrants who are economically viable and economic drivers, right. it's really changing the conversation from, you know, we have lots and lots and lots of people here um, of all stripes, all the different you know, statuses and situations. And if a fix that doesn't address those issues, that doesn't provide some sort of solutions for not just 800,000 people, but 10 million people and more, it's, right. it's a problem. Is it your sense that there is something else being expressed here underneath the obvious words up top? Is there something else afoot here in your, in your view? Uh, I mean, I think you know, there's certainly some nativist language that mm -hmm. has been has been used uh, by Attorney General Sessions uh, and his declarations of, I think he jumped the gun on the unconstitutionality and mm. talking about you know, all, the, all the problems. It's certainly, like I said, appealing to nativist uh, beliefs and native, nativist opinions mm -hmm. that uh, in the guise of, and I, but I hope that 
this is the, the button that you know pushes people forward and causes us to, regardless of the impetus, regardless of the, all the language surrounding it, that we right. actually get to a real solution. Good point there. Julianne, you know, uh, local folks are commenting on this. Senator uh, Udall called it, quote, cruel and short-sighted mistake that will cause chaos for families and our economy. Let's kind of break that apart. The economic side, is, is there a case we made here that this, pro this program would hurt New Mexico particularly? Economically, is there something that the about DACA program hurts DACA, I'm sorry, New Mexico? DACA, right, exactly. Not that no. it hurts it now, but the elimination of it would have some kind of economic impact. I mean, I think it, it certainly would have an economic yeah. impact. I mean, I, I was thinking this morning about if you're a person who's got a DACA work permission right now and right. you have just moved into like your first, you know, grown up job in your career and you hoped to stay there for three to four years and really learn marketable job skills that will help you like move up the career ladder. Now, you know, as you said, there's this big degree of uncertainty. And so, you know, you may make different choices in your career. You may have no choices to make mm -hmm. in your career. And I think that there's, it's undeniable that that will have an economic Right. You know, uh, a fact. Exactly right. For a state like New Mexico, we, we our population makeup, do we, are we in a particularly vulnerable position here on this? Is there something about it that lurks even worse for New Mexico than say like a Connecticut or a Rhode Island, somewhere that's not dealing with our issues? I don't really think so. Okay. I mean, my, you know, I'm not a demographic expert sure. on, you know, every city in America, every state, but I feel like there are um, hardworking immigrants who are getting, um, you know, who have DACA work permits mm -hmm. everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, and certainly you see that in larger urban areas. The right. fact that New Mexico doesn't really have large urban areas um, might even make the argument, you know, in another way. That's a good um, point. However, we have the border, you know, we have a, a direct line right. um, to, to folks coming up from the south. And so that may be another way That's to make right. the argument. That's right. It's a good point. That's a good point. <laughs> You know, honestly, Laura, you know, as we sit here and tape this um, at, at this time of the week, we had a, some confusing tweets from the president that uh, about dreamers specifically. And this goes back even further with old interviews a year and a half ago saying, I love dreamers. We need dreamers. I have nothing against dreamers. All this stuff, pro dreamer. And then all of a sudden in one fell swoop, it was just, you know, like the complete opposite. Who is the president trying to appeal to here? Is this because it would seem to me that the polling I've seen so far is a vast majority of folks do not support this idea of, of mucking with dreamers and young people. Who, who is this supposed to be appealing well, to? Well, I think, I think he's pandering to his very narrow base that elected him. I think yeah. there's a, a segment of the population that were staunch Trump supporters that feel very strongly about this uh, mm -hmm. nationalist kind of idea. Um, and, and, and that's who he's pandering to. In addition, I think there's some very conservative elements and um, in the Republican Party. Uh, certainly, Jeff Sessions, I think, is part of this uh, ilk. And mm -hmm. um, their idea is just that this, is, this was something that should never have happened under the Obama administration, and mm -hmm. it's his charge to reverse it. And so I think you see a, a dissonance between um, maybe his personal view about what the dreamers mean to the country, right. who they are in particular, what their potential is, and then also trying to sort of um, uh, you know, balance that with this idea that it's his responsibility to reverse what was done under Obama. That's right. So I think you see these confusing um, positions mm -hmm. that, of course, evolve over Twitter and mm -hmm. uh, don't add anything valuable to the conversation, I think. But um, nevertheless, nevertheless, I think that for New Mexico, we do see a huge impact, and I think it causes a lot of uncertainty among students. I think that's why we saw the walkouts um, in colleges, universities, and um, some of the major school districts with students just being really up in arms about it because they are affected, you know, their parents, many of their family members. I mean, it just causes a lot of anxiety and uncertainty for people. And I think economically it does impact New Mexico as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it just creates uncertainty for people who are in those positions where they have work permits and they have an expectation of continued employment. And even for the employer, it causes some uncertainty. You know, what's going to happen? How are they going to fill those Good positions? Point. What's the timing? Right. I mean, it really... It, creates, I think, havoc for um, a place like New Mexico and, and most states. Yeah, get your point there. Lana, interesting, uh, you know, reading over this quote from the Attorney General, which reads partly, in part rather, um, it also denied jobs to hundreds of thousands of Americans, meaning folks who came over, by allowing these same jobs to go to illegal aliens. And it just seems to all be boiling down to this mm -hmm. Ill Ill illegality <laughs> of people, meaning it just seems like these DACA kids are being 
paid, uh, having to pay for the sins, if one seems, wants to look at it that way, for their parents. Mm -hmm. There's something unfair about that that strikes a lot of Americans. Would you agree with that? It just Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, Democrats, Republicans, I mean, I think the opinion polls, I mean, people are not in favor right. of making this uh, the perhaps the priority it is, mm -hmm. um, and the tweets are are the usual uh, confusion. What do you make so, of those? Where do you think he's at on this? He keeps. I think it enables people to take away what they want to believe about him. You know, right? So you right. can he, look. He said to Congress, "Here's your mission. Here's, you know." So there's an out. So you can, you know, people can grab onto that and know he loves these people, or they can grab onto their illegal aliens. Sort of, you know. Always trying to get the best of all worlds. Right, exactly right. Serge, let me finish up with you on this subject uh, where we sort of start, and that is this idea that there is a quote unquote fix coming that'll satisfy all Americans <laughs> somehow uh, on this issue. Mm -hmm. And just playing devil's advocate for a quick second, what is wrong with having Congress get after this? Well, you know, if this was a unilateral decision by a previous president and it's been sort of hanging out there for a congressional fix, has the guy just done us a favor in, a, in an odd, weird way? to get this down the road a little bit. I think I'd be more optimistic that it was a favor if it, okay. this wasn't an issue that, you know, for the last 16 years hadn't been going unsolved and had proven itself just impossible to, yeah. to find something that will, there's, there's obviously nothing that's gonna make everyone happy. I wonder if there's anything that will make everybody equally unhappy right. or if even that is a pipe dream. Uh, and so I think it may end up being like the right prod that pushes us to actually do something, right? but that is me being very hopeful. Six months, interesting, we'll see what happens. When we come back to the line, we'll talk about New Mexico's continued reliance on private prisons.